Well, it's Tuesday and it's my day off, so I figured today what I'd do, since I'm staying here at the house and not going up to the property to do any work on there, uh, I figured I'd do some canning. Uh, picked a lot of the blackberries. This year the first was the first time I actually picked blackberries from our uh, vines in the backyard and did not go out to the berry patch where I usually get my blackberries from for my jam. So today what we'll do is uh, set up some jam. I'm down to four cans of blackberry jelly from uh, 2015, last time I uh, did some, so it's time to get some up. Uh, when we picked them up and juiced them, I've got probably a gallon and a half of uh, juice, so we'll can those up. I can them all in a pint sized jars. So first thing we do is wash up all your jars that you have uh, and make sure they're clean. Set these all aside, let them dry up, and we'll uh, get the juice prepared to put it in. I'm using a recipe in the ball book just for doing jellies on blackberry jelly. So let's go there. These are five quarts of blackberry juice. They've been sitting in the refrigerator for about a month, month and a half. Uh, when I process my juice, I actually heat it all up, boil it all down, get it set up, and then we put them in uh, quart jars to uh, put them in the refrigerator. And what happens is they actually do seal. So all the lids have been uh, snapped down and stuff, and then we throw them in here. I'll strain them again, and then uh, we'll process the juice for jellies. The biggest part about canning is to have all your stuff all your supplies ready so you can get to it. I'm preheating my water for my water bath. My stove is so small, it's your standard electric track home stove. It's not big enough. I can't wait till we can uh, get to our homestead and build it. I want to build an actual canning room. It has a big enough pot and stainless steel to where I can do a lot of canning and a lot of preserving for that. Uh, so I have a pot here that I'll use. I'll change burners over. I start my water up so it gets hot and then I'll just put it to a smaller burner to keep it warm and then I can process the juice. But what you need to do is I've got my jars of juice right here uh, set out. I will filter those. I have all my utensils here. You can see that there's really no space to work. All my measuring cups over here, my jars over here, and with this recipe through the Ball's book, you need five cups of sugar for three and a half cups of juice, and then what that will do, that will give you almost five cups. I'm putting them in pints, so there's two cups per pint, so we'll do a double batch. We'll get our pectin out, but the sugar, to have that much sugar, I carry and store five gallon buckets of sugar. What they are, they're four uh, pound sacks. There's four in the bottom and four here on top. I keep three of these pails full at all time, giving me eight, hmm, four times four, 16, 32. There's 32 pounds of sugar here. And that would be for three of them. So I have enough sugar to do canning like this and not having to uh, go to the store to pick these up. When we actually get the other house built, I want to get up to where I have probably 100 to 200 pounds of sugar on hand at all times. So I have sugar in supply to when I do do canning and stuff like that. I have it and I don't have to run out to the store. That's a 45 mile ride one way. So it's a you know, two hour trip to the store to get anything. So what we'll do is we'll get the water flipped over and start processing our juice to uh, start making our blackberry jelly. I'm using the Ball's book for home preser preserving on it for their jams and jellies. It's showing for the blackberry stuff, three and a half cups of juice, two tablespoons of lemon juice, now the lemon juice I use is the lemon juice that I canned uh, a year ago. Uh, I'll just open that up and use that. One pack of uh, uh, pectin and then five cups of sugar. 
And this here's what you'll do. You'll uh, it says add the juice first, and then mix your pectin into it, and then pour your sugar, and then we'll fill up the jars. I just poured out one of these jars. Will actually hold three and a half cups of the juice. So we'll just use one jar per per uh, a packet that we're going to do up. I will bring the juice to a boil and we'll let it roll. The recipe calls for two tablespoons uh, of lemon juice per batch. I'm doing a double batch so I've got seven cups of uh, blackberry juice in here. We'll have ten cups of sugar. A lot of sugar but it's one of the best ways to store sugar for long term and it makes the blackberry jelly tastes really good. The lemon juice I use, instead of buying a little tiny lemon thing, this here's the lemon juice that I canned a couple of years ago uh, that I make lemonade out of. We did it, I think we did it last year for uh, the summer lemon juice. Uh, there's a lot of lemon pulp down at the bottom. What I'll do is I'll pull off the lemon juice on the top and then what I'll do is I'll make some more lemonade tonight out of the rest of this and add just to a double batch of that. But this here's where I get my uh, lemon juice. That's why I actually juice lemons out every November, December, and then just take the juice, put them into uh, pint cans, and then water bath seal them. So I have sealed lemon juice that can sit on the shelf for as long as you would like. You can make lemonade with it, use lemon to cook, preserve, and stuff like that. So it's a nice thing to have storing lemons in your uh, pantry. Got everything set up. I've got this coming up to a high. It's going to come to a boil. Got my pectin sitting here ready to go. Canning supplies over here. So now all we want to do is I want to keep this uh, curling a little bit so the juice doesn't burn on the bottom. Turn it on high. And I want to bring it to a boil before I put my pectin in there so the pectin will be able to dissolve. And once that pectin dissolves, then what I'll do is I'll add my uh, 10 cups of sugar. Uh, 10 cups of sugar was probably oh, one and a half bags, so about four, probably six pounds of sugar. So it took about one and a half bags of the sugar that I have. Get the sugar so I have it ready to be poured. It's starting to get to a nice roll, though. so I will start adding my pectin to it and make sure I whisk it in here and a nice roll. It's boiling nicely, so I'll mix it in there and then start whisking it in. While I'm mixing to make sure the pectin will dissolve. There's one. Keep stirring this until it looks like it's completely dissolved in there. I turn the heat down just a little bit so it doesn't burn me. The steam's pretty hot. Looks like the pectin has been all dissolved in there. Now it's sugar time. I just pour the sugar in all at once. Keep stirring it. That is 
one batch. That's 10 cups of sugar. As you add the sugar, the temperature of the liquid actually starts going down. So turn it back on high a little bit. Get those over into the sink. Now I'm going to keep stirring it and bring it back up to a boil to make sure everything is mixed together. And liquefied. I don't want any clumps of sugar or clumps of uh, pectin in my jelly. Here's what that looks like. I'm going to let it go, come back up to a boil so the pectin will actually uh, set itself up and start gelatining. Now we're pouring them into our jars, leaving a half inch head space between top of the jelly and the rim of the jar so it'll give it space to uh, seal give some air space I clean the lids off with a wet rag pull the lid out of uh, some hot water Seal the jar up, move it over, grab another jar. I got them over here sitting in some hot water. I want to keep the mixture moving a little bit so it doesn't burn. I've got it on medium heat to keep it liquefied. You can see it's starting to gelatize as we speak. Looks like I'm going to get six and a half jars out of this batch, so I'm going to put together some more in here and do another batch. It came to a final total, I got 16 pints, so that's 32 cups plus. A little jar. This one's not enough to uh, water bath, so we'll throw that in the refrigerator. So we have a total of 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 quarts, or 16 pints of blackberry jelly. Now what i got to do is basically water bath them. Uh, I'm going to put them in boiling water for 10 minutes. That's what the ball book recommends. I've got a pot of water that was uh, warming up. Now it'll come to a boil. I'll put this bottom rack in here to keep them off of the bottom of it. And we'll boil them for 10 minutes and then set them aside to cool and seal. In this particular uh, pot, I can get seven cans in there. So what we'll do is we will 
get them back to a rolling boil and then set my timer for 10 minutes and we will boil these up and then I'll set them aside once they've boiled for 10 minutes and uh, we'll put another seven in. Well, the first batch is done. So now we'll take them out and set them over here on this rag that I have to cool off. Since I have another batch to put in, I will just set them down. I'm putting them on a wet towel so they cool nicely there and don't crack on the countertop. So we'll get these out and get the next seven in and get them boiling up for 10 minutes. Well, they've all been water baths, so now they'll just sit here on the countertop until they seal, cool down, and pop the lids. Uh, so basically, that's uh, how we process our juices from vine to juice to jelly. Uh, once these are done, tomorrow we'll put them away, and probably be enough jelly here for the next two years for us. So, thanks for watching, and look forward to the next video.